And today we're going to look at how to generate a zero trust multi-currency HODL wallet or paper wallet with good old fashioned dice. So you want to be able to hold multiple cryptocurrencies in something more secure than a software wallet, but also don't want to fork out for a hardware wallet just yet. Or maybe you don't trust Ledger or Trezor or anyone else like that to generate your seed for you. But you also want to be easily able to transfer all of your holdings into a hardware wallet later. Generating your seed in this way helps you to understand clearly that your seed phrase is more important than the physical hardware wallet. And if you'd like to hear more about how to stay safe in the crypto space or how to recover if you make a mistake, just hit subscribe. So the steps for this are really straightforward. Step number one is you need to get yourself some dice. You can get a set of 10 dice off eBay that look exactly like this for a grand total of $1. Or you can raid all the board games in your house or just go to a local cheap shop and grab some D6 dice. Second step is to choose a consistent way of rolling and reading the dice so that your subjective choice is taken out of things. So you really don't just want to roll all the dice and read them in whatever order seems good to you and change how you do it every single time. So for this one, I've just got them in a standard takeaway container and I'll basically just be shaking the box and then aligning them all in a row on the bottom corner, just reading it from left to right like this. Step three is load up Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool in a secure air gapped environment like Tails Linux. Don't just open it in your browser. And uh, if you follow my video on how to set up a Tails environment, you can do that. And uh, that's what I have right here. Ian Coleman's tool is fully open source. You can download a copy and run it standalone yourself. And you can even archive that copy if you really want to make sure that the, it's not being tampered with uh, on his GitHub or anywhere else. Once we've got Ian Coleman's tool open, what we want to do is actually say show entropy details. And what this is going to allow us to do is to manually enter the entropy of our dice rolls in. What we need to do is roll enough dice so that we end up with 256 total bits worth of entropy in the key. That is for a 24 word seed. You can also stop at 12 words if you like, uh, but we'll be doing it for tw to 24 here just for the sake of the demo. And there we go. So we've got 100 dice rolls, which gives us 259 bits of entropy. And that's actually everything we need for a 24 word seed. So rather than just say use raw entropy, we want to select use 24 words. If you'd selected use 24 words, even before you had enough entropy to get a secure 24 word seed phrase, it still would have spat you one out. Now put in here a fifth step, which is basically verify that your dice are fair, well, fair-ish. And uh, there's a number of ways you can do that, but mostly it will involve rolling the dice many, many times and just check the distribution of the numbers to see if it matches what I would expect for a random set. So there's your shiny new 24 word seed. And you can also add a BIP39 passphrase just to help secure your backups just in case someone gets their hands on a raw copy of your 24 word seed. And I've covered that in a number of other videos. So at this point, you need to write down your 24 word seed and store it in a secure location. Alternatively, if you want something that's a bit more robust, that won't burn, rust, uh, or won't have a problem if a toddler or a pet decides to chew on it, uh, then you can just get yourself a cold tie off Amazon. They're like 20 bucks, and it's a titanium plate that you can just punch your phrase into for secure storage. So now that we've got our key backed up, it's time to deposit some crypto. And before we do anything else, what we're gonna do is we're gonna untick show entropy details, because we don't need that anymore now that we've entered our dice information in there, and we're going to tick this box that says hide all private information. So you can select the coin you want and you can also change the derivation path. Now some coins like Bitcoin and Litecoin and stuff uh, support multiple address formats. Uh, so BIP44 is the legacy format, BIP49 is what's called SegWit in a lot of wallets and BIP84 is what's often referred to as native SegWit. Uh, but if you're unsure you can just leave the default BIP44 for whatever crypto you're using and it will be good. So if you're using something like Bitcoin, you can actually just scan the XPUB key and then have a wallet that lives on your phone that will just generate all the different receive addresses for you. So basically how that works is you just select the kind of wallet you want. So we're saying BIP44 and you can just scan this account extended public key. So we'll call that HODL. And then if we scroll down, we can actually see that it will match all of these addresses that are being generated in Ian Coleman's tool. So that's really, really handy. You can receive as many different transactions as you like, 
and you never have to worry about keeping track of these public addresses. Not every coin supports that, but for those that do, it's really handy to be able to receive deposits, just like a normal wallet, as well as to be able to keep an eye on your balances. For other coins that don't support a watch-only wallet, what we can do is we can simply just copy and paste the addresses we want into a text file, just using USB stick or something like that. Let's say we wanted to hold some Ethereum or some ERC20 tokens, scroll down, see all the public addresses, and look, we're not really interested in the public key. What we really want is just the derivation paths and the addresses for ETH, so you can just copy them and just paste them into your text editor of choice. And while you can print a PDF of the page, if you have ticked the box to hide all of the private information, uh, some people I'm guessing will be more comfortable being able to fully audit and check exactly what is in the text file that they are transporting out of their secured amnesic environment and make sure it only contains these public addresses, nothing else. Uh, you'll notice they are case sensitive and they are quite long and random. So the chance of you just making a mistake in transcribing them by hand is quite high and just copying and pasting directly is a much better approach. So if you are into complete anonymity, you don't need to actually worry about keeping a copy of these public addresses, but it can be handy to be able to deposit crypto into your wallets without having to go back through the process of setting up tails, putting in the 24 word seed and doing that every single time. So having a few spare deposit addresses up your sleeve can be a really good thing to do and it doesn't in any way decrease the security of the wallet that you have. You might be wondering why I'm suggesting it's worth keeping this derivation path column and uh, basically I think that's helpful to have just in terms of when you go to use this crypto later down the track. And I'll have a video in the future that looks at what it would look like to import one of these wallets into Coinomi and ledger and uh, see how your crypto is represented there. While someone can't steal your crypto if they got their hands on this information, uh, it would be worth you storing it in such a way that you can be confident that someone hasn't gone in and changed these public addresses to be public addresses that belong to them so that you might in the future be depositing crypto somewhere other than where you think you're doing it. So uh, I think it is worth storing this kind of stuff in say a password safe or something like that. Uh, rather than just leaving it lying in an open text file on your computer. Alternatively, if you've got your crypto ready to go in a software wallet or a wallet on your phone, you can actually just put your cursor over the address and scan that on the QR code reader on your phone and send your crypto there that way. So happy hodling. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.